If you like my dad's videos, please subscribe to QA Insights channel. In this episode 18 of Performance Engineering series, today we are going to deep dive into Ycrash. Till now we have seen various tools such as Eclipse Mat, Java Mission Control, Visual VM and other utilities to find the performance bottleneck of your Java application. But today in this video we are going to deep dive into Ycrash, how you can get started with Ycrash and how you can use Ycrash to find the bottlenecks of your Java application. We have already touched the scratch of Ycrash, but in this video we are going to deep dive. As you know, Ycrash is a Java RCA solution. It is a root cause analyzer, not the APM solution. It complements to your APM solution and also it works locally. So this is one of the important feature of Ycrash, at least at this moment, there is no SaaS version available in Ycrash. And it captures all the critical artifacts to find the root cause. So no need to just segment your analysis. So once you send the command in Ycrash, it automatically captures everything you need for your analysis and also it will pinpoint the issue automatically. To get started with Ycrash, we have already discussed in the previous videos. First, you have to sign up in Ycrash.io. You will get 14 days trial license key and then you can download the latest version of Ycrash. In the zip file, you will find your bat file or shell file and then you can configure your agent with your license key and then you can get started with your agent. So wherever you want to analyze, capture the dumps and other artifacts, you can just deploy it and then you can see the UI from the load balanced URL. As I already mentioned, Ycrash captures all the critical artifacts which will be very helpful to deep dive further. But three artifacts are important for analysis purpose that is garbage collection log, thread dump and heap dump. Apart from these three artifacts, it also captures the netstat, vmstat, ping statistics, disk usage, iostat and more. Now we are going to see a quick high level architecture about Ycrash, then we can get started how you can leverage Ycrash to find the performance bottleneck. So this is the very high level overview of Ycrash architecture. So here you deploy your Ycrash in your local server. By default, it runs in the port 8080. And then you will run your Ycrash agent in all your host machines. So this is the machine where you will run your Java application. And as you see here, everything will be under your network. Everything will be contained in your network. It will not go or it will not share the details to any third party. So that is one of the important feature you have to know in Ycrash. Because the dumps are very critical and it is very sensitive in terms of security and audit purpose. So you cannot share the dumps to whoever you want. You have to contain it to your network. So that is where Ycrash plays beautifully. Everything will be in your network. Now let us uh, go to the terminal. So here I am running a couple of uh, terminal session. So in the left side in this particular uh, window, I am running Jetty locally. And in the right side, I am running some JMeter script. So JMeter is just to simulate the load to my Jetty application. So here we are going to leverage Ycrash and identify any potential bottlenecks in the Jetty application, not JMeter. And in this terminal window, in the left side, I'm running my Ycrash uh, UI, the server actually. And here in the right side of this terminal window, we are going to make use of Ycrash.exe file. And then we are going to pass certain arguments so that we can capture all the artifacts, which will be very helpful to identify the potential bottlenecks. First thing we have to do is just go inside the agent folder here, add the yc.exe and you can send the argument hyphen version. This will give you the agent version of your Ycrash agent. So in this case, I'm using 0.68 version. Let me clear my screen. To get the help command, you can refer the online documentation or you can just type yc.exe space hyphen h. So this will give you all the help commands. You can use it along with your yc.exe command. Now let us capture all the artifacts to analyze what's going on in our Jetty server. Before you begin, you have to know the process ID of your Jetty server. To get the process ID, you can use a JPS command. It will give you the process ID of all the Java applications running in the host. So in this case, you can see start.jar. So this is our Jetty server, which is a 23416. So I'm going to launch my 
yc.exe. Next, I'm going to send the process ID using the hyphen p command. So I'm then I, we are going to pass the process ID. Now we are going to add the agent dot yaml configuration file using hyphen c then we have to pass the yc agent dot yaml before i hit enter let us quickly see what's there in the agent dot yaml so this is my sample yaml file which i will be passing along with my yc dot exe command here we are passing java home path in line number three and line number four where you have to pass your license key which you will be getting in an email and yes stands for your server where you are running your y crash usually this will be your local host if you are running local host or your server name and the port which port you are going to expose and a stands for your say application name or you can just give some random name this name will get displayed in your y crash ui now let us go back to the terminal and hit enter so this will start capturing all the artifacts for the process ID 23416 and then it will get uploaded to your Ycrash UI. Now let us go to the UI. So I'm running in the port 8086. So what I'll do is in the back end for every 10 seconds, Ycrash will start capturing multiple snapshots. So why multiple snapshots? Because using one snapshot, you might not be able to identify the potential bottleneck. So that is why Ycrash will take three and it will start analyzing all the three and then it will get displayed everything in the UI. So now let us go to the terminal just to see what's the status of the dumps. So it is still collecting. Let us wait for a couple of minutes and then we can head to our browser. Now Ycrash collected all the artifacts. Now let us go to the browser and hit refresh. Here you can see there are four incidents got collected today and the recent one is this one so let me click on this so if you click on the particular incident link it will automatically take you to the rca report so here in the rca report you can see the application issues device issues so luckily i don't have any application issue but i have device issue where the disk usage is greater than 80 percentage and the process id 22928 which is causing more than 80 percentage of cpu so luckily we don't have any application issue uh, JT server is totally running fine. Now let us see the uh, GC report. So if you just click on the GC report here, it will display all the garbage collection details. So how much uh, is the young generation? How much is the old generation? Meta space and uh, total of all these spaces. And if you just scroll down, you can see the GC duration, uh, heap usage and when the uh, garbage collection happened. So all the beautiful graphs, charts, table view and memory leaks a long pause so everything will get captured here manually also you can do but you do not know where you can get started to pinpoint your issue so that is one thing it needs a lot of practice but tool like ycrash fills that gap so this is what it, it gets displayed in the garbage collection now if you go to the threads here here you can see there are three dumps thread dump one thread dump two thread dump three as i said it will take three snapshots and also it will displace the comparative summary. So what is the difference between the dumps? So here you can see dump one, dump two, dump three, almost identical. And uh, you can see the chart here and thread states again for each dump, thread group states again for each dump, waiting threads, timed waiting, blocked threads, flame graph. So this flame graph we can see in detail in a separate video, bottom up call stack tree, and if you want to uh, flip to uh, top down, you can flip this button. And if you want to see the particular thread dump, you can just uh, go to the thread dump one or two or three, and then you can see all the details. For every graph or every uh, report, you can see the relevant tutorial. So that is one thing you can check it out. On the top right, you can search, you can download the PDF. Now let us go to heap and let us see what's there in the heap. So if you click on heap dump, it is saying a uh, heap dump was not captured and you can see uh, you can click on this link how to uh, fix it so now let us uh, capture the heap dump also so let us go back to the terminal and let us just enter uh, yc.exe and uh, hyphen h and if you just scroll up so here you can see there is an option uh, to capture the heap dump so by default it is false so by default it will not capture anything so we have to enable that flag so you have to pass this particular argument hyphen hd so now let us uh, clear the screen and let us uh, just to send the uh, process ID 23416 
and let us uh, send the uh, yc agent dot yaml and let us pass the hyphen hd argument now let us uh, wait for a couple of minutes and then we can go back to the ycras ui now all the artifacts has been captured now let us go back to the browser and hit refresh in ycrash and let us click on the latest report now let us directly jump to heap as you see the heap dump has been captured now and here you can see the total size class count object count thread count and other details so this is how you capture the heap dump in ycrash and as you see again it will display beautiful graph charts table and other potential issues if any now let us go to processes and here as you know it will display the process id and the cpu utilization and the memory utilization of all the processes which are running in the host so here you can sort it out by uh, process id or the user or cpu or memory utilization and if you just scroll down you can see all the details about your processes now let us click on uh, storage so in the storage uh, it will display the disk usage c drive and e drive so my c drive is almost full so in the network report uh, it will displays the number of connections in the host and the tcp ip connections and also it will displays the ping statistics at certain duration interval it will automatically ping some third party url and it will display whether the connectivity has been established or not so in case of no connectivity it will display the relevant details so here as you see my ping statistics is less than 40 milliseconds that is good and if you scroll down, you can see the pipe charts and other details. So this is how you get started with Ycrash to identify the potential bottleneck issues. Suppose you don't know how to get started and where to get started to identify the potential bottleneck, then Ycrash is the right tool. And then it will help you to pinpoint where the potential bottleneck is. So that's the case on my side. If you have any questions, please write them in the comments. And thanks for watching. Have a good day. If you would like my dad's videos, please subscribe to QA Insights channel.